Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will be a quick one. I was shared, someone shared a video with me that I just got to share with you. This is somebody's testimony. He was raised in a very strict, uh, what do you call it, radical Muslim family. I'm talking trained to fight since he was seven, sent to America to recruit young men into the Islamic faith, Muslim faith, whatever. And anyway, it did a backflip on him, and I just want to share this with you. It's it's just um, it's just a feel good story, and just shows how Jesus can get a hold of anybody because he came here with hateful intentions in his heart. And he could be saved. So, and he was saved. <laughs> Anybody can be saved. If someone that comes into your country with the intention of killing or, you know, recruiting people to kill, eventually they would form together to kill. I mean, that's something we've known could always happen. Anyway, I'll end it with that. And, and you know, I just want to say... Um, uh, I appreciate all the kind comments and I have enjoyed the not so kind ones where I got a chance to do a little explaining and I hope that I made myself clear and didn't go off on people too much. Uh, I know that, um, Sometimes when you talk about politics, it can get like our religion, you know, talking about Jesus, you know, somebody starts telling us Jesus isn't who we know he is, you know, I hope you'd get up in arms, you know what I'm saying, like, oh yes he is, <laughs> you know, start fighting for him, and so sometimes it gets that way with politics too. So anyway, I think I've had my share of politics for a while, I hope. I mean, unless I really feel the Lord saying, you got to share this. <laughs> I don't believe it will be. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I want to say about that. So I love you all. I'm going to get busy praying for y'all right now. Praying, I got to pray. I got to plead the blood. I just, somebody sent me a link to Joni Bonet, Bonet. Bonnet, however you say it, uh, and I watched it, and it was about pleading the blood, um, how the Lord has uh, woke her up in the middle of the night and told her, you got to get this done. He wanted her to anoint every window and every door, which I have taught y'all this before in my spiritual warfare series, but if you haven't, or you haven't heard that, and you don't know about this yet, there's evil in the air, and in order to keep myself from being deceived by lying spirits, I anoint now every night. I mean, I don't anoint, but I plead the blood. And I've had people say, oh, you don't have to do that because Jesus shed it on the cross. Well, the Lord wants us to. That's our way of, even though we don't go kill a lamb and, and put the blood on the door, we, we're not killing Jesus again. We're just taking what he did for us and using it in a spiritual sense. I also did want to mention something else I thought about talking about earlier. It's going to be longer than I thought. I have been, I, some people say, well, you shouldn't tell that, but to me, it's part of our spiritual walk with the Lord to fast. So I should teach you to fast. And how can I teach you if I don't do it? Well, I do it every Monday. I, I fast two meals and don't eat until at least 6 o'clock. Well, about, I guess, six weeks ago, I started breaking my fast with communion. And I used to only have it like every three or four months because I would just forget. But the Lord, I asked him to start reminding me, 
I bought some kosher grape juice and some of those uh, kosher uh, unleavened, uh, they're called matzah crackers. I just break off a piece to use. And um, so I've been breaking my fast with communion for about six weeks now. And I started getting those numbers after I have started doing that. So even though I don't get woke up with messages a lot anymore, the Lord's giving me messages in a different way. So, because he knows how much I, you know, I want to hear from him. Well, this is just hearing from him in a different way. Just like you might hear from him in, in different ways. We hear from him in different ways. So, the more you seek him and do his will and do things that are prescribed, you might say, in the Bible... I was thinking of that verse where he was telling a group of people, if you don't eat my body or drink my blood, you will have no part of me. And I was used to wonder about that. And about half the crowd walked away. And let me pull that up. Just hold on a minute. This is going to be a little bit longer than I thought, but that's okay, isn't it? If you don't eat my, here it is, flesh and drink my blood. It's John 6, 53. Okay, well, I want to go to Blue Letter Bible and enter John 6, 50. Because I want to go above it, and we're going to go from there. And I'm going to use the NASB. Okay. Now, on verse 50, let's go a little higher than that. All right. Verse 47. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. He's talking about believing in him. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. So he that they ate a physical bread and died. So see I've always thought I was just spiritual, you know. In verse 50, this is the bread which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Now, let me switch over to King James Version for verse 50. I want to see how different it is. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. It's not a lot different. Okay. All right. Verse 51. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? I can see where that might have confused them a bit. Verse 53. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. All right, let me check that with KJV. <clears throat> Verse 53. Then, and this is a new, they're showing a new paragraph. Well, anyway, he says, Then Jesus said unto them, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Hmm. That could be confusing. He goes on to say, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now here, here's a good one for you. I mean, y'all probably already know this, but you know their fathers, well, he, he means their ancestors, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The ones that obeyed God, they... Their spirits are in heaven. The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So their bodies are decayed in the earth. They're going to be, they're going to get their glorified body after or at the time of the great earthquake. When all of the bodies will rise. See, that that's, that's how I... The Lord hasn't specifically showed me the order of things, just that they would happen. Or, um... Okay, now, I shared with you the video of the, the guy that the Lord said, You are my prophet. What was his name? Arnold? Arthur? <sighs> Forgive me. But it's... The last video, I believe, or the one before it, if you watched it, he was talking about all these things that he knew that were co a confirmation of things the Lord had showed me, like multiple raptures, that Obama was the Antichrist, and he was saying that Pope Francis is the false prophet, and see, a lot of you might not be interested in all that because you know you're going up but a lot of people that you might could tell that to might come around once you're gone and they're left and all the stuff you've told them and then they see these things happening they'll know not to be deceived by those people okay Okay. Help me, Jesus. Okay. I was talking about the fathers did eat the manna, and he says they are dead. Well, their bodies are dead, but their spirits have got to be in heaven. But he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So it is a little confusing. I'm not an expert. I've never said I was. And some of these scriptures do cause me to ponder. And I've heard different things preached on different subjects, different scriptures. And there, one guy says it one way, another guy says it another one denomination says it one way, and this denomination says it another. You get that. So, 
But Jesus is saying, if you eat his bread and drink his blood. So it just came to me tonight as I was about to take communion. I wonder if that's what he meant. Or is it totally spiritual? What do you think? I started doing this about six weeks ago, and now I'm getting number messages that I wasn't getting. I'm doing it out of, because I want to, but also because, you know, we're supposed to. Now and then, anyway. I hope you do. And I don't make any real big to-do about it. I, I just say, Heavenly Father, please bless this cracker and this juice, these communion elements. Bless and purify them so that I can um, partake in this commerce. Uh, I'm tired, you can tell. I can partake in this uh, communion sacrifice as Jesus requested or something like that. I might even say it different every time, a little bit, a little bit different every time. But the point is, I don't, my daughter would always get out the Bible and she'd read it out of the scriptures. She would have the gospel that she liked and read it straight out. But I don't do that. I just say, I now take this cracker and I, Jesus, as it represented your body that was broken for me, it's unleavened like you, it had no sin. And I now break it and I break it at that sentence. I say, and I'll break it, I will take it, and I will eat it. And as I do so, I do this in remembrance of you. And I'll take a piece and eat it. Believe it or not, I give some to my dog. And another thing, um, when the same thing with the drink, I'll say, Jesus, this juice represents your blood that you shed for me. And I will take it now. And I will uh, drink it, and as I do, I will do it in remembrance of you and for what you did for me on the cross at Calvary. And I'll drink it down. Okay, there was another thing. Joni went over in her video. That's the one someone sent me the link to, and I went to it, and I watched it. And it was about, you know, pleading the blood over your house and anointing it with oil. If you've never done that, you need to do it. And she was talking about how you need to do it on the outside. You see, when I first moved in here, I thought I should go to every door and anoint every doorway. I did. And my daughter said, now, how about if we just do your apartment? I just wonder. You know, see, I always listened to her. She was my mentor so to speak. She really was. She moved so fast. Once she gave her heart to the Lord, she moved so fast. And she would tell me things that I needed to do better or different. Until, like last year, I told her, you're not my mentor anymore. Or maybe two years ago. I said that Somebody had taken me to the Lord, and, and the Lord told them, I listen to men. And I told that person, you are absolutely right. I listen too much to men. And so I've tried to stop doing that. You know, I respect your opinions. I respect, I know I can be told you know, hey, you're wrong in this. And sometimes you're going to be right. And sometimes you're not. So I'm more careful now to listen or maybe not listen so much to men. Okay? Because I do believe that person heard right. I would listen to men, women people 
not not in big huge ways it didn't change my faith or it didn't really uh stop me from like my daughter tried to get me to get off youtube see i wouldn't do it a couple different times maybe three she told me that's keeping you too stressed out and too tired that's why you're so sick i i don't agree i think if i didn't have this i would be worse I don't know, it does get rough at times, but really, it's my way of fellowshipping with y'all. And I enjoy it very much, and I rattled on way too long, but I hope I've taught you something. Anoint your homes, do communion, have get you some unleavened matzo crackers, they're not expensive. And I would, I would suggest kosher juice or even use wine if you can take wine. I just quit using wine because, like, I don't know, maybe a couple years ago, I was using wine, and I would just take, you know, a little bit in my little wine glass and, you know, use it with communion. And one night I had about a half a bottle of it, and I just felt like drinking a glass. And I drank a glass of wine, and then I finished it off, and it didn't really make me... I sure didn't get drunk, but I didn't need to be doing that. I don't need to be doing that. We need to stay sober-minded, but there's nothing wrong with you having a glass of wine. But I don't need to be doing that. So I quit buying wine. Not a good mix for what I'm on. Okay. I guess that's all I have to say about that. I didn't even mean to get into all of that, but evidently I needed to. So, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you, and all of your devices. And with that, I'm going to say, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.